Hello guys and welcome back to part 3 of the engine teardown video. So in this one, you already know what's going on, so we'll just get straight into it and we'll continue to get it down to the block and see if there's anything wrong with it. If you haven't saw the first two episodes of the engine teardown, part 1 is up there. So we click that, you'll see part 1, then move on to part 2, which is going to be here. Watch them two, come back to this and then you can see part 3. Just so you're up to date with what's going on and you know what's being done previously and why we're doing what we're doing next. So as you may remember in the previous episodes we took the plenum off, got everything off the top of the engine. We got the turbo manifold off the front, we got the turbos and the manifold off the back too. And I think that was actually it really. <laughs> oh and the, um, the thermostat housing that came off too. So in this one what we'll do is, we'll take the engine mounts off the brackets, this, that big thing there. Same on the opposite side. And there it is. And then we'll get the alternator off. The aircon compressor, that can come off. The power steering pump, we'll get that off. And both of the belts. So you've got the auxiliary belt for the alternator and the power steering belt. As well as the covers for the timing belts. And then we'll see how far we've got from there and continue to strip it down further if we get the time. Right, so first things first, in order to get this belt off, we need to take this one off. I have already loosened it off previously, so this should just slide straight off. And then, we're going to change that so we can get rid of that. And then on this, to get rid of this belt, to get this belt off, you've got to loosen the tension and bolt. You've got to loosen the tension of bracket to let it swivel. Then that'll take the tension off this bit of the belt. The belt. Then you can pull it off because it's a V-belt, as you can see based on the shape. You've got to try and get it over the lips on this, so you need to take a lot of the tension out of it, otherwise you won't be able to get it round. And if you didn't take this belt off first, it'll get stuck around the harmonic balancer where the other belt goes. You can't get it round it then, so we'll do that now, and then we'll crack on. You can see the belt's a bit worn, so we uh, that will be getting changed because I would have done that anyway because this is probably about 15 years old. That's off. But uh, just put the ball back on the tension just so we know where to come from. Okay, so that's all loose. So now that we've got this off, what we can do next is we'll take the power steering and pump off. Give it a swivel. There's a nut there um, and a big bolt down the bottom. So we'll pull that out. Oop. We'll get them off and then we can get that out and hopefully there's nothing wrong with it. There it is, power steering pump. As far as I'm aware it works, it's all free, there's no sideways movements in the, the pulley spins as it should. So uh, hopefully that should be good enough to just give a bit of a clean and we can throw it straight back on when we've built the rest of the engine up. Might as well take the tension off as well while we're here. It doesn't really need to be on the engine at this point so that's going to get cleaned up and painted anyway so we might as well take it off and make our life easier later on. Same again. Sounds a bit rough but it does spin. I might try and get a new bearing for it, press that bearing out just a C-clip on the inside. Don't know if you can see, but take the C-clip off, pull the bear and I'll swap the bear and press it back in. Job's a good one. Now, this is the AC compressor. The way this works is that spins on its own free, but when you turn your AC on, as far as I'm aware, there's a solenoid and there's a clutch inside this. So when you turn your air conditioning on, the clutch engages, which then goes from a free pulley spinning to then spinning the compressor on the inside of the aircon unit. This. And that should then compress the air conditioning gas and give you nice cold air through your, air, your AC unit in the car. I don't think this works, so we'll try and strip it down, try and get it working again. If we can't, we'll just do an aircon delete and then that gives us more for a big single front mount intercooler if that's the way I go with it because I'm going to put the the twin side mount intercoolers back on initially just the stock ones and then 
change them further down the line. But if this doesn't work, we'll get a big one. If it does, I'll get aftermarket twin. So we still get good intercoolers, but we can still keep the air conditioning as well because that car gets hot in the summer. So we'll get this off, we'll get it on the bench, and then we can move on to the alternator. And when that's off, we'll take the pulleys off, which is these two. These are just for the belt to go through. These don't do nothing other than spin. That's all the four. So uh, let's get this off. That's heavy. <laughs> So, there it is, DC compressor, it's a bit dirty as you can tell, but that works still, just need to strip it down and just make sure everything on the inside works as it should, and if it doesn't we won't know until we put it back on the car, so yeah, there's that, so let's get that on the bench. So removing the alternator actually isn't that bad, there's a nut there. Uh, and then a bolt there. Take them two out, that should then just fall out towards me, get the bracket off after the fact, and then we can get the aircon compressor bracket off because this is in the way of a few of the bolts I need to get to to get the AC bracket off. So let's get that off. As you can see, it just drops. I think it's gonna, it could be replaced whilst it's still in the car. It's not easy, but you can do it. So I think they've designed it in a way to make it as easy as possible even though it can still be an awkward job it's just bonus points to Mitsubishi because if this ever dies which you probably will know my luck I'm probably going to need to change it let's not drop it There she is. Don't know, if, don't know if you can hear that, but that sounds a bit rough. Listen to this. No, I just made a light out of me there, but it sounds like there's something loose. So we'll have to try and strip this down as best we can and see what's wrong with it, if there is anything. Or if it was just a one-off. Right, so now the alternator's off and the AC pump, we'll get this bracket off, which is the alternator bracket. And you probably can't see it because it's covered in oil, but this whole bracket here is what holds the AC compressor, so we'll get that off as well. So that's the alternator bracket off. Put the bolts back in where we can. I think I've said this previously, but if you put the bolts back where you got them from, when you come to building it back up, you can either know what to replace it with if you're going to change it, or you just know what goes in that hole. So you don't put the wrong bolts in the wrong place and then crack the block or something come off or something snap, because all the bolts have different grades for strength. So you've got to make sure you use the right ones in the right areas. So now that that's off, we can get to these. So I struggled to get to that bolt before because the alternator was on. Now that it's off, I can get to that and I can take this plate off. I really need to buy myself an impact. So how do you win this by hand? That's one up front. Don't know if you can see it. Bolt there, take that off. This whole thing should come off because it's that is a tensioner for the ribbed auxiliary belt for the alternator and the air conditioning compressor. To get that bolt off, this should all come off as one unit with the tensioner. And of course, it's not the one I've got. Everything on this so far seems to be the B, a 12mm for a 14. So if you're ever doing this, at least if you've got them too, you know you'll have what you need. To a point. So looking at it now, I still need to take these two bolts out, but I can't get to them without taking this off, but I've loosened this off previously, so I can just unscrew that. Take them out, that'll come off with it, that can go as a unit up on the bench, and I can take this bracket off, so I didn't realise how much was involved to get that one plate off. 
but it seems to hold a fair bit up. There it is. An oily AC compressor bracket. Just need to figure out where the oil came from. Now that all that's off, I might as well take this off as well and we can put that up there and then this bit of yeah, other than the oil filter and the housing, we'll do them later. Everything in this area has been taken off and we can move around to the opposite side, see if anything's still on there. Come back to do the engine mount, the dipstick and the exhaust manifold, same on the opposite side. Actually, we might as well try and get this off while we're here. Um, don't know how easy that's going to be, but we'll try. So this is called a harmonic balancer. So what that does is as the crank spins, you'll get rotational vibrations. This absorbs the vibrations to prevent the crank from dancing, and then you, know, you get excess wear on your bearings and stuff. So this is designed to spin and keep the crank level as it's rotating and with these, these are actually in three parts. So you've got the centre, a rubber middle which joins the outer ring and the inner ring together. This rubber tends to perish over time on these cars especially and this outer ring separates. I've got lucky because this hasn't, the only thing is will it is the question. So. You can upgrade these to aluminium ones which are solid pieces because they're not as heavy but they still do the job or I'll probably just run this and check it periodically to see if it's actually starting to delaminate the way it usually does because it's unnecessary to change it if it's fine if it was spinning or if it had some form of play in it I would change it but they're not cheap and um, they're not the easiest things to find and I don't think I need it yet so We'll just run with this one, put it back together, just give it a bit of a clean. To get this off, you've got two pins, well, two, sorry, two holes, <clears throat> and that's designed to have a tool that goes in with pins. It locks the harmonic balancer from moving, and this is kind of the same, bit different, so I, I ride motorbikes. This is actually a, cl a clutch basket tool. What it does is it clamps down the clutch basket while you're taking the center nut off on the motorbike. But it has got two pins, like I was saying on the outside. Now in the past I've used these to get these off and they have worked, but no my luck at this probably won't work. We'll try because we haven't really got much else of an option. So you'll pinch it together there, get your socket in, break your bar because it's quite tight, snap it loose, and then when it's loose you just take the bolt out and then this should just wiggle off. Might need a bit of the WD-40 and a love tap, but you've got to be careful not to chip these because they become unbalanced and then that causes more issues and then your belt could come off, it could rip the belt and it's just not a fun time so you've got to be careful when you're taking it off but when you do make sure you put it somewhere safe so it doesn't get damaged. <coughs> right let's see how far we get. <coughs> well, hey, And we're off. This big crank nut should just come out now. And as you can see, it's a decent sized bolt, so uh, I think the torque specs, something like 180 newton meters on this might be a bit more. So that actually doesn't sound like a lot, but that's free. That's the wrong tool, but it still works. So innovation is key, I suppose. Now we've got to fight, fight with this to try and get it off and hopefully it just wiggles out and like that it's off so you can see on the back there's a little pin well a pinhole and then on the crank there's a pin so this based on where it's being balanced so it's got drilled out holes to make it all even that will always be balanced to the crank unless you change something in regards to the, the crank on the inside or this but because we're not we should be okay and that went a lot easier than I expected it to, I won't lie to you. I'm happy but quite surprised. So now that that's off, thinking about it, you can remove this plastic cover. So this plastic cover you can't take off, which is stupid because when you do the time, the water pump timing belt, you've got to strip this down, all the other belts and everything, just to get to that cover. 
to take it off. But I suppose it's beyond this, you kind of have to. Yeah, we'll get that off, put this on the bench, and I'll show you what the front face of this looks like with the water pump. The way the timing belt runs, the hydraulic tensioner that sits here for the timing belt. And yeah, it's quite interesting. <coughs> but as you can see, this is the setup for the timing belt. It's quite a, uh, an intricate design. So you've got your intake, these two, your exhaust, the two outermost, your water pump in the middle, this just works off friction, it's not toothed, it just rubs against this, the outside of the belt and that spins the pump. Down here you've got your timing belt tensioner and then the hydraulic tensioner here. So this is filled with oil and it constantly presses against this leg which lifts this up and gives you constant tension around the belt at this point which it obviously stops the belt from slipping so you don't lose your valves because your pistons kiss them because that's never a fun time. That's just an idler, that just follows through and then that is obviously your crank and that is what drives the whole thing to make sure the crank, pistons and the valves are all moving in sequence with each other as they should in the right time. So yeah, it's pretty important to say the least. So you don't want to get this bit wrong and you want to make sure when it is in everything is tight because it will loosen itself off and then it will go wrong even if it was done properly initially. So that is the front of the engine. So now we're at the rear of the engine. While we're here, we'll take the rear engine mount out, the power steering pump bracket and the pump tensioner, that can come off. The engine hoist brackets on the top and the rear turbo oil feed which comes from this. I think don't know I think that might be the oil pump but I could be completely wrong on that I just know these two need to be changed because they tend to go but I can't for the life of me remember what they're called <laughs> so yeah we'll get to that we'll get them unbolted get them off and then I think the backside minus the exhaust manifold is done and there it is it's the rear engine mount big beefy thing a bit rusty and cover the oil like most of the engines but I'll try and give that a clean up a nice new look of paint and hopefully it won't get covered in oil again because we'll fix whatever it was that was leaking should have thought about that really now the engine hoist brackets they're just two 12 mil bolts on either side and that should just lift off. There's one. That's two. Now it's just three bolts on the power stair and put bracket, one there, one at the back, and oh, I lied, there's only two. Now that those brackets are off, I'm gonna move that a bit. I'm gonna drown the exhaust studs in good old WD-40. Let that settle in, because uh, you're gonna need the penetrating oil for this. Because there's no chance I'm getting them off in one piece without snapping everything. So I'll drown them in this. Let them soak while we're doing the opposite side. I drown the other side. We'll come over to the end and try and get this off. If it snaps, it snaps. But I'd rather not if I can avoid it. So. We'll soak them, leave them, we'll heat them if we need to, and then hopefully get it off in one piece. I'll try and give you a quick glance at how rusty this actually is and why I need to use a lot of heat and penetrating oil because, yeah, I'll just show you. So as you can see, 30 years worth of rust settled in and you've got absolutely no chance of getting them off without snapping every single one unless you use heat and maybe penetrating oil. So now I'll put you round to the back of the engine where we'll take off this little bracket. This I think is a cam angle sensor or something to that effect. Probably wrong but We'll take that off and then we'll take this. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a little tube that goes from here to the front 
And where you saw the water pump on the other side, that tube goes all the way through from the water pump to then go into the thermostat housing, through there, into the block, back down, radiators, all like that. But that needs to come out, so we'll take that out with these bolts, we'll take that off, and we'll take this bracket out. So one thing I've just noticed is, I think this might be a cam position sensor or a cam angle sensor, I'm not sure, but this bolt here is for adjustment. So this behind it is slotted, so it slots all the way up. What you can do with this is you can rotate it up and down, I'm assuming to set the position of the cams or to tell it where it's supposed to be looking at. So if I undo that bolt fully and take it out, that will lose its position. So what I need to do is be very careful what I'm doing here because I think the best thing I can do at the minute is to either notch them. So you put a mark on each side where they line up. So it's like match mark. I can paint pen it, but it might come off. So I'm probably gonna go with the first option of notching or scribing it. Let's put a bit of a groove in it so I know where it sits. Then I can take it off because if I do it now without marking it or knowing where it is, it loses reference and I don't know how to set that up. Or well, worst case, I'll have to spend hours on the internet trying to figure it out. And that'll end up being a video in itself, but for now, I'll scribe it and then we can go from there. I just thought I'd jump in because that nearly caught me out then. So let's get it off. Right, so I hope I don't live to regret it, but I've notched it, which I'll show you now. So as you can see, little focus there, two little notches in it. So when I take that off, I know exactly where it was when it lined up. I can clean it down with a wire brush and nothing will happen to those marks. And then hopefully when I fit it back on, it'll fit as it should where it should and we don't have any major issues with starting the engine up so worst case i think if that's off you'll just have running issues there'll be no mechanical problems like interference because that doesn't really set all that i think just just sets the likes of the fueling and the spark for when to spray it in and when to cause spark basically that's if it is what i think it is if it's not then i'm just gonna sound like an absolute idiot but at least you know I'm not perfect. So we'll get that off and then we can get this water pipe out and I'll take you around to that side of the engine and we'll strip everything else off there as well. So I don't know what I'm missing, but I took that nut off there. The only other bolt on it is there, but you can't get off because of that. But if you come to the front, that is only put on with these types of screws, which you can only tighten, you can't take off. So I'm at a bit, of a bit of an impasse with this, trying to figure out how to get it off. I have no idea how uh, I'll come back to you when I figured it out. So I figured it out and it was quite a scary process, which involves a hammer and a screwdriver. But as you can see, between the, the head and I'm pretty sure that is a cam position sensor. There's a slight gap. You get the screwdriver in, give it a, a little bit of a tap, and this then comes off. As you can see, it's slotted on the inside, so that will rotate. And then if you look inside, that is the end of the cam, by the looks of things. So as that cam rotates, that will tell the sensor where it is and feed back the information to the engine which I can only assume is for the fueling. So yeah, it's a bit, uh, it's gonna need cleaning, to say the least. So now we're at the front of the engine. We'll take this bracket off, which is the front engine mount. This bracket actually mounts to the mount on the engine. So we'll take that off. Hey, anyway, what? we'll leave that on for now. We'll take these two bolts out, pull this uh, mount out as well as that big one there, that, that needs to come out as well. We'll then take that bolt out there to remove the dipstick. 
pull that out, put that to one side, and then we'll drown the exhaust manifold studs in WD-40 like the previous side. Let them sit for a while while we work over there. Try and get that off, and then we'll come back to this. And that'll be one of the last things we take off in this video. Because after that, we can then start going onto the timing belt and all the important parts of the engine. And that will be in part four. So, let's get to it. There it is. It's all rusty like the other side. Again, covered in oil. I don't know how, but this engine loves to just spit oil out, whatever oil it ends up being. Because it's just absolutely everywhere, other than inside the engine. But yeah, that's off. We'll get the dipstick off. We'll go to the other side to the manifold. Because it's just an empty pipe, I really don't want to distort it, but it's not coming out. Nope. Might have to just leave that for now. We'll get the turbo feed line off. That's there. Uh, that bolts to the oil filter housing. So that can come straight off. Ooh. And now we might as well take off this bracket, which holds the oil filter housing, because that will come off soon. Just three bolts. We can put that to one side then. No way, we'll get that off. There it is. Don't know what it is. I think it's just an oil filter housing bracket, but. Might just be to give it a bit more rigidity. But uh, yeah, that's now off. Ooh. And now before we go back around the other side, like I said earlier on, we'll drown these studs in penetrating oil, also known as WD-40. Get them absolutely drenched, spin the engine, we'll get it off on the other side, we'll try. Then we'll come back around to the side, try and get this manifold off, and then as well as that little bracket that's it for this video and in the next video we'll tackle the timer belt oil filter housing try and get the cam covers off and just get that little bit further into the engine so let's uh, tackle the exhaust oh no me tools idiot so while that's soaking we'll get this top bracket off I think it's off the alternator we can put that to one side as well. The goal is to take everything off the engine eventually so it's not left on it. So when we strip it down for paint, you haven't then got to go over something we should have already done. I would also like to add, this is my first ever engine stripped down, rebuild, whatever you want. This whole process is going to be just as much of a learning curve for me as it will be for you in terms of me relaying the knowledge I find out doing this, the do's and don'ts and the things I do wrong to then tell you about so you, if you ever do it you don't make the same mistakes I do. So uh, I'm quite happy to make that sacrifice. So bear with me. Right. Now it's time to see if the WD-40 made any difference or if every stud is still going to snap. I think for the sake of playing it safe, I am still going to heat them up because it just helps and you'll get to see the process. Wish me luck. Well, the first one we got lucky. I mean, the nut didn't come off, but the stud did, so I'll settle for that. So if the rest do that, I'll be quite happy. If they snap a lot. <laughs> Move on to number two. So that time, it was the nut. Which again, still a big win. So now we're... Uh, the rest of them so we're down to the last one you haven't snapped anything yet but i can't use the ratchet on this last stud because of access so i'm gonna have to get creative with spanners and hope it doesn't snap so wish me luck i 
and it's free. If you haven't snapped it. It does look like it's pulling the stud out, but I'll settle for that. Because if I just snap that, there's absolutely no way I'd have been able to get the drill in there to drill that out if the manifold didn't come with it. But we're making good progress. I like to think the nut's coming off, actually. Yeah, so the nut's spinning off. So when this is off, that's one manifold out. Then we'll have to spin the engine and do the other side. And if we can get that as well as we've had this, then I'd say it's been a pretty successful video so far. Let's give this a bit of a tap. There it is. One rusty cast iron exhaust manifold. That's about 30 years old. And then the gaskets. So the gaskets on these are multi-layered metal gaskets which is quite good because if you clean these up you can reuse them I've got new ones so I'm not going to but say you were to just change the exhaust on the car for example if you unbolted that you can reuse that gasket providing it's clean so just clean it off and you can put your new exhaust straight on then so now on to the other side right so <clears throat> spun the engine round and hopefully the penetrating that we sprayed on this previously before we've done the other manifold has settled in. Again, same process, a lot of heat, a lot of luck, and let's just crack on with it, because if they snap, they snap. So yeah, again, wish me luck. Can't believe it. That's gotta be some kind of a record. I've just done two exhaust manifolds with a total of 14 studs. And not one snapped. Not one. Usually you snap at least 10 if you're doing 14 studs. But uh, I suppose you say, take it and run. Don't complain. But I'm, I'm, yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed by that. I don't know what I've done. Uh, might go buy a lottery ticket. But that's the second manifold off. So yeah, I'll um, show you around the engine, or well, what's left of it. I'll show you what's on the bench, which is everything we've taken off today. And give you a little breakdown of what's next. Just to show you how cold it is in the unit, I've just took my glove off. And my hands are steaming. So yeah, welcome to the UK folks. Right guys, so that's it for part three of the engine turn down video. As you can see on the desk behind me, we've got a lot off. We've got a lot done. The block itself, well, what's left of the block is starting to look a lot more bare. So soon enough, it'll be down completely in bits. And then we can start working on it, cleaning it up, painting it, changing things, gaskets, seals, bearings, you name it. I'll swap what I can. And we can build it back up. Hopefully start it without it blowing up. And uh, yeah, then the car is that little bit closer to being on the road. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to get updates when I post my next few videos. And if there's anything you want me to do, anything you want me to change, any suggestions, leave them in the comments. I read all the comments and I'll take it on board. And I'll use that in my next few videos to make it as best as I can because as you can see by my channel, I'm only just starting off. So any advice is good advice. So once again, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.